I've attached a uh, alligator clip to this yellow wire on the control unit, and I, there's two gray unit, two gray wires uh, over here. These are the wires coming back from the reed switch. If I manually touch these wires together, it'll actually throw the switches. Let's see if I can get everything in the camera here. If I manually touch these gray wires and connect them to the yellow wire, you can see how it's throwing the switches. This is the same thing as closing the reed switch. Uh, when the engine goes over the one, when an engine goes over the one reed switch, it'll essentially connect the reed switch will connect these two uh, terminals together. When the uh, uh, train comes in the other siding and goes over the other reed switch, it'll connect these together. So you could actually put uh, a push button that would connect these two terminals to manually control the throw the switch. It's the same way I'm doing with this wire. And if we go back and look at the end, probably doesn't pick up in the camera, but you can see the other switch is showing also. It's, it's throwing also. We were talking earlier about how this was uh, done in large scale, the LGB size. A LGB has actually published uh, drawings to do this since I don't know when, probably the, the mid 80s, but uh, you have to have, obviously to have multiple train operation on the same track, you got to have engines that won't stall, uh, you know, trains that won't derail and trains that won't come uncoupled, so it, it demands more of your trains. here. Here's the corresponding LGB components. If you need a, uh, a gap in the track, you can buy one of these uh, gap sections. You see it already has the gaps in the track. This one's got it in both sides. You can buy them. You could buy them before LGB went bankrupt. You could buy them uh, in both rails or buy them with a gap in a single rail. And they gave you a terminal block, so all you do is just uh, screw your power inputs there to wire up power to wherever you need it. Uh, your reed switch was in closed in this thing which snaps right into the track. The reed switch is inside of what they call a track contact. Uh, you can come out of that and go back directly to a LGB switch motor which is over here. That, that hooks up to these two wires. A fairly simple way of uh, hooking up reed switches to control, control uh, switches and relays. This actually has a relay that's made to plug right in the back of the uh, switch motor. One of the relays by itself looks like looks like uh, this. This just plugs in the back of this uh, plugs in the back of this switch motor. Here's one of the newer style track contacts. This is the older style that goes underneath the track. This newer style uh, just just snaps right into the track. So everything's plug and play in LGB, but you get into S gauge and there's nothing plug and play for this type of automated control. You're basically, you know, hacksawing and filing and uh, soldering to try to make this stuff up as best as you can. Uh, for somebody like me who doesn't have much modeling skills, it's kind of a struggle, but we got there. I, I may be the only S-Gage person that's crazy enough to build one of these in S-Gage, but we've uh, done it for an upcoming uh, train show in uh, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. It's going to happen in November 2008. Here's your LGB magnet. This thing is made to actually just snaps on the bottom of your LGB engines. Again, uh, plug and play and when this magnet on the bottom an LGB engine passes over the track contact containing the reed switch it sends a, a pulse down the wires which will activate the uh, LGB switch motor and throw the relay if you've got relay points plugged into it. This, this system is essentially unique because it's designed for American Flyer switches which are power rooting. When you put the, when you push this uh, button uh, that direction, which is the two train operation direction, uh, it has mechanism inside it that it, it roots the power on these inside rails. Like when the switch is straight as it's shown now, this rail is dead. If the switch is in the curved position, then this rail is dead. So it cuts off the power to the uh, sidings and stops the train coming in. Uh, I generally work on the positive rail, which for uh, all scales, I believe, except the LGB, the positive rail is the uh, right rail. In other words, we're, we're traveling that way. So the right rail, as seen by the engine, engine is over here. And that's where I cut my gaps in the right rail. Now this particular one, which seems strange, I had to cut two gaps here because I'm working on the right rail with my rheostat and stuff, but the, the switch is controlling the uh, left rail, which I can't control. That's the design of the flyer switch. So 
if I don't cut a gap in the left rail, the power would come in from the other end because we had that switch back there set the normal operation because we want power coming into the slowdown sections all the time. As mentioned earlier, if you're doing this in large scale or some uh, system where your switches weren't set to current hogs like these American Flyer switches, you could probably use a, a railroad concept switch master. That's what I've got here in my hand. Uh, I don't want to hook it up to the these things because I'm afraid I'll burn it out. These are actually made to uh, power LGB switches and uh, LGB switches apparently run on around a half an amp or so. Uh, and Railroad Concept also sells the similar round magnets. I think the Railroad Concept are a little larger. They actually sell one for G scale and one for HO scale, two different sizes. So you can get this thing in magnets from Railroad Concept if you're doing this in a scale that has reasonably efficient uh, switch motors. But like I say, for this special case of American Flyer switches, which are current hogs, uh, these automotive relays uh, seem to be a, a way that works as far as we can see. We have one concern, uh, which in fact Curtis Rokes of Railroad Concepts brought up, that we need to be careful our our uh, reed switches, which are back here, that they don't uh, burn out over time driving the automotive relays. They seem to work okay in the short term, but we need to uh, test them longer. Some other things to note about the uh, Railroad Concepts unit, which again we're not using here because of the high current draw of these American Flyer switches, but these things actually handle the, the routing of the track power side to side. In this case with the Flyer you don't need it because the switch, the switch as you, you know if you dabble with American Flyer switches, when you put this button in the two train uh, setting which is over there, which is where it is now, it'll, it'll handle routing the track power uh, to the two, two sidings. In other words, turn it off to this one when it's in a curved position, uh, turn it off to this track when it's in the straight position so that the, the track uh, for which the switch is thrown against it is dead. Uh, like LGB switches don't do that, so he's got this thing set up that it'll take care of the track power routing. Also another nice feature this has is he sends a pulse to the switch of approximately, I think it's two seconds, and then he, he stops sending the pulse to the switch motor. So it means even if you park a train on top of the, so that the magnet's on top of the reed switch, this will only send a two second pulse, and then it'll, it'll stop trying to activate the switch. Uh, the bottom line is you can park a, tr a train with a magnet on top of the reed switch, and the switch won't burn out, because this will only try to throw it for two switches and two seconds and then stop. Whereas as mentioned earlier, if you park a magnet on top of the uh, reed switch with this system, it, these automotive relays will continuously be activated, which means they'll continuously be sending current to the flyer switch motor, and you'll start this thing smoking after about a half a second or so, and probably burn it out if you do it for too long. Just for possible uh, uh, refer future reference, there's a space on the end of the control unit here. Uh, I'm not sure if it's readable in the camera or not. It says switching interface module. This is for a possible future addition of a, rare, uh, of a railroad concept switching interface module, which would fit right here. And the idea is we could actually uh, upgrade this thing to tr three train operation. Right now, this blue wire uh, is what's controlling. This comes out of the rheostat and it goes back to the uh, stop-start section. This this wire is what's actually putting the power to the stop-start section. The switch uh, takes care of routing it to the proper leg. Um, what happens right now when one train comes in, uh, activates the uh, relays and the switch, it throws the power to the other side and the other train will immediately take out, take off. Uh, when you think about it, there's three different things you could possibly do when you have two trains coming into a siding. Uh, you can have the one train immediately start up like we're doing here, or you could put some kind of a time delay in the system, like possibly adding a timer here that would hold both trains for a, a predetermined amount of time, and then the second train take off. Or the third way, by adding some sort of a double pull, double throw relay, which is what this is, to uh, turn the track on and off, we could wait till a third train gets about halfway around the, the loop uh, out on the main line and then release one of the two trains sitting here which would 
make this thing three train operation. And this has actually been done. We've done this in the large scale. We call it automatic switching block. It's uh, demonstrated on one of the other tapes, but that's a, that's a possible future upgrade to this thing. But right now we just want to try it as it is and see well, how well it holds up during the course of this uh, upcoming two day train show.